Higher education is in crisis. Revenues from all sources are expected to decrease at both public and private universities. Before COVID-19, universities were already beginning to experience an enrollment decline, mostly fueled by demographic changes. The current crisis will raise existential questions for small and mid-tier institutions. Only universities with massive endowments and highly competitive admissions will escape the effects of the coming enrollment cliff. Higher education's business model is flawed. Administrators and bureaucrats overwhelmingly outnumber research and teaching faculty combined. Infrastructure and facilities are underused. The academic calendar is inflexible. Athletics and leisure are often prioritized at the cost of academic achievements. And many universities are burdened with debt. Students and parents have begun to take notice, questioning skyrocketing tuitions and increasing student loan debt. They have noted, rightly, that many students never graduate and among those who do, a significant number have massive debts for degrees with a low job guarantee. And now, some students are suing their institutions for tuition refunds, which might eventually cost universities billions. Special coronavirus relief funding from state and federal governments will improve cash flow in the short term, but they are not permanent solutions. Colleges must act now to cut unnecessary expenses while preserving core academic functions. What reform should colleges and universities initiate post-COVID to survive and thrive? As a first step, universities should institute immediate hiring freezes in academic departments. Teaching and research faculty comprise at least one-third of employees at most four-year institutions. Full-time faculty members with low teaching loads and no externally funded research should be encouraged to teach more student credit hours. Older faculty should be incentivized to take early retirements. Temporary pay cuts of up to 10% should also be implemented for all faculty earning more than $100,000 a year. A second stage of reforms should consist of scrutinizing academic departments for research contributions, degree productivity, and students' return on investment. Inside Higher Ed reported in January that only about 60% of programs at private nonprofit institutions and 70% of those at public colleges and universities would pass the Obama administration's gainful employment test if it were in place and applied to them. Low-performing departments that have fewer than 10 graduates per year should be eliminated or consolidated. Universities should also rethink spending in the social science and humanities disciplines that lack academic rigor. For example, the so-called grievance studies disciplines have been called into question for their activist origins and ideological homogeneity. These studies, according to authors Helen Pluckrose, James Lindsay, and Peter Pagosian, are based less upon finding truth and more upon attending to social grievances. These politicized departments can often be expensive. For example, there are currently 28 different types of scholarships, grants, and part-time campus employment opportunities in the Rutgers University Department of Women's, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. The average salary of a tenured gender studies professor is more than $100,000. The funds saved by eliminating programs that do not provide value to students and society can be directed to other academic programs. In order to preserve the academic core, many spending cuts should be focused on non-academic programs and services. Administrative bloat, for example, affects most universities. It comes at the cost of faculty and research and is often the largest cost of tuition increases. At some universities, administrative positions grew over 200% in the last decades 
compared to only 10% growth in faculty. Staff outnumber faculty with a ratio of 2 to 1 at many universities. These non-academic personnel are often highly paid. Facilities require major changes as well. Before now, some institutions began using online learning to improve facilities use. With that trend accelerating and enrollment declining, universities should freeze any new capital projects. Future projects should be efficient instead of luxurious. College athletics should also face cuts. Many universities spend lavishly on athletics, often diverting student funds to sports. The Drake Group has suggested a fundamental restructuring of college athletics, including an immediate freeze on salaries, hiring, and bonuses, as well as a reduction in support staff. There should also be a reduction in athletic scholarships. These reforms preserve core academic functions while increasing university efficiency and are not dependent on federal relief. Radical change is essential for the survival of small colleges and universities. The post-COVID-19 world offers a rare opportunity to reform the education sector for generations to come. It would be imprudent to miss that opportunity. Read more about the Martin Center's recommendations at www.jamesgmartin.center. And please like this video and subscribe to our channel.